What we're going to look at in this video is determining areas, sections and values at which curves are increasing and decreasing. Now in order to do this we have to think back to the skill of differentiation. Remember calculating the derivative looks at and refers to the rate of change of a curve. Now taking the rate of change we can determine if something's increasing or decreasing so this is going to be another lovely application of this skill. Now when we're doing it we have to bear one thing in mind. What we have to bear in mind is there's two possibilities. Now as I've just said the derivative of a function tells us about the slope and lets us determine if it's increasing or decreasing and it has to have a certain characteristic. If the derivative is less than zero, so if f dashed of x is less than zero, the function is decreasing. So if the value of its negative, the function is decreasing. Think of the gradient. Yeah, if f dashed of x was a negative number when it comes to gradient, the slope would be going down the way of a straight line. And if f dashed of x is bigger than zero, the function is increasing, so it's getting up. I.e. a gradient for a line like this would go up the way. Now it can tell you about the graph. Now if you look at any graph, you could tell by looking at it where it's increasing and decreasing, and then the derivative should match up. So similarly to the gradient, if you think about a decreasing curve, it comes down from left to right, and an increasing curve goes up from left to right. Now if I look at these two curves here, let's look at this one first. This is a typical quadratic. All right, this is how a typical quadratic looks. It's point where it turns back on itself is right there on the x-axis. If I take any value in this section here, so any value for x less than 0, it's coming down the way. So this one here has a negative derivative. So what we know about here is because f dashed of x is less than 0 for any value in this section, it's going to be decreasing. But if we look here, it's going back up the way. So it's going to have a positive value for any of these. So it's going to have a positive gradient. So here, f dashed of x is going to be bigger than 0 for all these values. So it's going to be increasing. And if we match these up with the derivative, we'll see that every single time. So it tells us about how the graph's roughly going to look. If we look at this one, this is a typical cubic. So you've got a point here where it turns back in itself, a turning point and a turning point here. We can actually look at this graph and tell what values we should get for the derivative between these values of x here. So if you think about this one, this is coming up the way up to this point here. So this one here is going to have a positive derivative. It then turns back on itself and goes down the way. So it's going to have a negative derivative in this section here. But then that's going to flip again and become positive when it goes to there. So it's going to become positive. Now, this is going to reflect on the graphs of derivatives, and we'll look at that later on. But right now, I want us to get the understanding of how it looks for the original function and what this means. So this tells us the shape of the curve. So let's see how we can calculate where functions are increasing and decreasing, and how we can go about that. So imagine I want to find the intervals for which this function here, y equals 4 plus 2x squared minus 1 over 3, x to the power of 3, is increasing for a and b decreasing for b. Now, for one like this, you always start with the same thing, we want the derivative. So in this case, we want dy by dx. Derivative of 4, no, that just goes. 2x squared, so we keep the 2, bring the power down, reduce the power by 1. Then derivative of this one here, so we keep the 1 third, bring the power down, you've got 3, so then x, and you reduce the power by 1. We then simplify it. So 2 times 2x, that goes down here and becomes 4x. We've then got 3 times a third, which just becomes 1, so it's then take away x squared. Now we can factorise that and get x bracket 4 minus x. Now, if we were going to look at a for the increasing, we know dy by dx, which is the x bracket 4 minus x, has to be bigger than 0. So two things multiplied together have to be bigger than 0. So there's two possibilities here. Both parts are positive or both parts are negative. Now, the key thing is this value here. Because this one is always going to be bigger than 0 or less than 0, depending on what scenario we're going to go for. So key thing we have to look at is the 4 minus x. So if x bigger than 0, we know then that the 4 minus x also has to be bigger than 0. And for the x less than 0, we know the 4 minus x also has to be less than 0. So x is bigger than 0, this one here tells me 4 is bigger than x, i.e. x is less than 4. And for this one here, with x being negative, this also has to be negative. 
So x has to be bigger than 4. Then it's a case of looking at the values, seeing what happens, and then figuring out where we could possibly go. So for this one here, just look at the different sections. So if x is bigger than 0, x would be less than 4. So it falls in the gap of 0 to 4 somewhere. So let's imagine it's 2, it's 3. If it's 2 or 3, less than 4, this will always be positive. So will this. So I'll get two positive values together. So that there is always going to give me a positive value. So it's going to fall between x and 0 and 4. But let's see if any of these other scenarios come into play. Because in this case, I'd have to have an x bigger than 4, but an x less than 0 at the same time. Well, hold on a minute. That mathematically can't happen. We can't have that happen. I can't give you a number that's bigger than 4 and less than 0. So this part here, it goes. So for it increasing, for part A, we know that the x has to lie somewhere between 0 and 4. For then part B, we can use this to build on for our other one. Well, for this one, we know if x is between 0 and 4, it's going to be increasing, which means beyond that, for x less than 0 or x bigger than 4, it's going to be decreasing. So we've got two separate areas of values that we can pick from, but both give the same result. It's going to be a decreasing curve. So there we go. That's us determined about the increasing and decreasing portions of this curve. Let's have a look at another example. Find the intervals which function f of x equals x bracket x minus d squared is increasing and the intervals which it's decreasing. So I've got f of x here. Now we want to find the derivative. It's increasing, decreasing functions. Instantly think derivative. Well, to get the derivative of this, I've got to multiply it out. So I get f of x equals x bracket, well, x minus d squared gives me x squared minus 6x plus 9. We then multiply by the x again and we get x cubed take away 6x squared plus 9x. So that's what my f of x is. I've then got to calculate the derivative. So what I now want is f dashed of x. So take each term one after the other and calculate derivatives of it. So x cubed, bring the power down, reduce it by 1, get 3x squared. Then take away and then the derivative of that. So bring the power down to reduce it by 1, and derivative of 9x, well, we just get rid of the x in that case, it's 9. So I get 3x squared minus 12x plus 9. Now, I can factorise out a common factor here, and I get 3 bracket x squared minus 4x plus 3, and I can factorise that even further, and I have 3 bracket x minus 3, x minus 1. So I've got it factorised ready to go. Now, for an increasing set of values, what I know is that this part has to be bigger than 0. Now, the 3 is always going to be a positive 3. I can ignore that and just evaluate the x's. So what I know is that x minus 3 has to be bigger than 0 when x minus 1 is bigger than 0. Or I can have x minus 3 less than 0, but x minus 1 also has to be less than 0. So for this one here, the first one, x bigger than 3 at the same time as x bigger than 1. This one here, x less than 3 at the same time as x less than 1. Well, if we look at this first one, x has to be bigger than 1 but bigger than 3, so it has to be the bigger than 3. We can ignore that one, because if we don't, if we pick a value, say, 2, somewhere between 1 and 3, this bracket will always be negative. So it's got to be bigger than 3. Then we can look at this one here, same sort of logic. It's both got to be negative, but between 3 and 1, say I pick a value of 2, this will be positive, so I can ignore that one there. So therefore, for increasing, what I know is that x has to be less than 1, or x has to be bigger than 3. And this then can let me determine the decreasing one fairly quickly. I know then that my decreasing is the gap in the middle. x is somewhere between 1 and 3. So I've got my two intervals there for calculating them. It's all about using logic with this one for the increasing and decreasing functions. Just remember the same set of steps. Find your derivative of your original function, then look at the scenario. If it's bigger than zero for the increasing, remember you've got two possibilities there if you've got brackets multiplying together. Two positives or two negative always give you a positive value. Look at it that way, think about it logically, even in your head, think about examples just to help you get your head around the numbers. And look at the graphs. The graphs will help give you a big, big hint towards whether it's increasing or decreasing and tell you what you need to know.